Uh, good morning. My name is George Hawkins. I am the director of the District Department of the Environment. On behalf of Adrian Fenty, our mayor, I'm delighted to welcome my compatriots and all of you to the District of Columbia. Uh, we welcome uh, the joint efforts we are making to protect this vital resource, which courses through the middle of not only our fair city, but the nation's capital. I think what you've started to see in these last few measures of the Bay Barometer is the problem statement. The first three measures was showing you what the conditions of the bay are, the grasses, the fish, the resources. Then you see the barometer measures of what the challenges are. Agricultural runoff is what is driving the consequence of what is living in the bay. And I'll be mentioning a few more. Um, the first is wastewater. Now this is a remarkable success story. You can see the degree of percentage of accomplishment in reducing pollutants from wastewater. What does that mean? Here in the district, in the very southern tip of the triangle of the district, is the Blue Plains plant. It's the largest advanced wastewater treatment plant in the world. In a joint effort of Maryland, Virginia, the District of Columbia, and the federal government, this plant has been upgraded over the years to, in fact, be one of the finest institutions of its kind. And what we're reducing from wastewater, from the plant, from the pipes that go to a central facility, we're not done but has been significantly improved. And you can see the straight line improvement of these numbers. Each of these jurisdictions is now working together today on the next $800 million of enhancement to this plant in Blue Plains, which will further increase the improvement to these reductions. And we hope to get them almost entirely to our goal. This is a very significant part of the problem statement, which is our reductions from the wastewater treatment plant have been very successful. Compare that, however, to the next slide, and we have some very, this is main probably, along with the agricultural slide you've just seen, the problem statement of the region. Early in the Bay Barometer, you'll see an assessment of the population of the region, which continues to increase. The simple fact of the matter is that as we develop land, we convert either farmland or forested land, areas near our waterways or not. We convert it from natural conditions to built conditions all of this type of pollutant loadings increases. And this is a trend, as you will see, we're going in the wrong direction. That is not a bad thing in one sense. That means people want to live here. They want to come to the Chesapeake region for all the reasons that we enjoy our states and this region to live in. The consequence, however, of converting natural land to developed land, if we don't do it carefully, is very direct. And you see it here in this chart. I, for one, agree with Chuck Fox. There is a new game in town. EPA is back. I'm delighted to work with Chuck Fox and Jeff. Chuck and I worked at EPA over a decade ago looking at these exact same questions. I think this is setting up the primary problem state statement of the region. How do we affect decisions of where homes are built, how they're built, how they're maintained, as well as commercial, strip malls, all the development that we all see around ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis is driving the significant, not improvements, but reductions to water quality in the Bay, and how can our program have a direct response? The good news is that, in fact, there is a direct response, and each of the jurisdictions that is here at the table is busily implementing them. And what you see here are examples. And in the essence of this, these pictures is what we're seeking to do in the built environment is to take the best attributes of the natural system and integrate them into the built environment. Each one of these pictures, whether it be bayscaping, this, is this allows water to percolate into the ground rather than flow over the surface. You see a green roof, which is essentially growing part of our natural system right on the roof of a building. These are all components that historically were not the way we built. We built developments with concrete and roadways and roofs that were not seeking to get the benefits of the natural system. Now what we've learned is that in order to change those trends, which are so troubling, we have to integrate mother nature and ecology into the manner in which we build. And we can do this and are. The challenge we face in the region, because each of our jurisdictions is increasing the requirements for what must be done on this basis for new development, but you take this fair city, the nation's capital, 95% of the development that will be in the nation's capital for the next 50 years is already here. So the question is, how do we retrofit our existing homes, our existing buildings, to put these attributes into play? 
But these are projects that are going forward everywhere in this jurisdiction. They're absolutely possible. Not only do they improve the Bay, in our judgment, they make living in your homes and living in your communities that much better on a day-to-day -day basis as well. So there are multiple benefits to this kind of accomplishment. By the way, here, which is a green roof, that also reduces energy use. So the benefits you get from these efforts can be um, multiple across the board. Then now, here's a fundamental point. In every time we issue a measurement tool for the Chesapeake, there is sufficient and, and appropriate pressure put on government as to what we are to do in our jobs to improve the Bay. I can tell you from Mayor Fenty, the governors of Maryland, Virginia, Lisa Jackson, the Obama administration, there is no doubt this is a priority. But make no mistake, everybody needs to be involved in this solution. It is not just a government obligation. This is just a picture of a single family home, which we see, of course, all over this region. And what we've listed on this chart, which is highlighted here in the Bay Barometer Summary, are the things each one of us must do. This is not just a solution that others will be, will be obligated for. It's the 17 million people who live, work, and reside here who have a critical part of the solution. And these are everyday things you can do in your home about the pesticides you use, the fertilizers you use, what you plant, using a capturing stormwater and using it to water your yard. All of these are steps that the homeowners and the business owners in this region can undertake. I would add one more with, to the seven that are listed which is the location of your home itself. As new homes are built, the degree to which they're located near public transportation, they're put on smaller lots, they're designed with ecology in mind, and we make those choices as consumers, where we live, where we work, where we visit, we can have consequence to all these decisions and give us hope on those trends that are going in the wrong direction to turn them significantly to the right.